All right, our greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Journey of a Lifetime Tours to Africa. Today's date is August 15th, 2021, and this uh, conference call is in reference to our upcoming uh, tours to Tanzania, Ghana, Senegal, and the Gambia. And that's for 2021 and 2022. And a reference of everything that I'm going to be talking about on our newsletters and also on the our website itself. So what I'm going to read from is uh, the newsletter. The new information is always the, it always alerts you to give you the date and time of the our conference call for the next conference call coming up. And then some of the information are consistent and that's because it's just all preparation detail. So scrolling down the newsletter, uh, what you just see is our documentation. The main thing is once the conference call is recorded, uh, what I do my best to is edit it and put it in a presentation mode and upload it to, uh, to YouTube. So you'll see a conference call link uh, right there in the newsletter. And also if you're, you're on the website, right under the main menu, uh, you'll see a link to say, uh, YouTube or and then if you're using your phone or a mobile device, when you scroll down, uh, you see the link for YouTube. Once you get there, what you're going to see is just the playlist. And you'll, see also, you'll also see a playlist for previous uh, conference call recordings and things like that. I got everything organized on there to just give anyone who missed calls, who want to look at certain information before they make decisions and things like that. Uh, the documentation is there. And the next phase of uh, the documentation is the uh, the website details. So when you scroll down to the newsletter, you see a link that says Tanzania Roots and Culture Tour, November 18 to the 29, 2021. And when you click on that, that's when you get all the full details, uh, tour overview, and itinerary. That way you're, you're clear on the schedule and everything. The main thing I want to talk about on that tour itself is the visa. Visa information right there on that link. Uh, but the main thing I want you to do when for the visa is is actually go through using the email. And then for anyone that doesn't have a uh, visa email that's going to Tanzania and they, they need one, just send an email to request one, uh, just like any other trip you're going on. And the purpose of this email is to provide you with a sample application. And it's not a sample application, it has the application details that need to be filled in. That, that way when you type in the application, you can kind of see the information that you need. Uh, so once I open it, it does provide you with the link. And uh, once you click on the link, you're going to go to a nine-part online application. Personal information, contact address, employment, passport information, travel information, travel companion documents, declaration, payments, and complete. Now, as far as the part that says documents, it's on visa. So what you're going to do is um, recommend that you scan the signature and, and face part or picture part of your passport. Scan it nice and clean and just uh, upload it to your computer or scan it if you have a, one of those phone scanners or whichever way you choose or go to an office store and have them send it to you via email or put it on a flash drive because uh, that's what you're going to need. And also, when, the last time you took passport style photos, you can scan those photos or you can get them taken and then request for a digital copy and then you can just, same thing to uh, connect, via, connect it via flash drive or get it sent via email. And then the main thing is you upload that also. Uh, other document uh, you're going to need is a flight itinerary. So as soon as you're ready to do this, just send me an email, let me know, and I'll organize a flight itinerary for you. If it's a situation where we, are, we have the tickets already and you're doing it after the tickets have been cleared, then you just have to log into your ticket information and print out, print out your ticket information, and then you can uh, save it as a PDF file on your computer. And that's what you're going to use to upload uh, for the uh, Tanzania visa. Now the visa is 100 US dollars and it's good for 12 months and it's um, multiple entry into the country. And also once you finish this process, um, it, is, it will give you confirmation and you now give it uh, three to seven days and it will be finished. Uh, so the main thing is when you log in, it may take you a while to finish it. It may take one, two days or more. Uh, you want to save the information to, that give you login access that way you can keep going back in and work on certain things. And if you just run into any problems and need help, all you have to do is just send me an email or send me a, uh, a message on WhatsApp 
and then I'll communicate with you and get it worked out. Now what I mean by supporting information, when you scroll down it's going to say notes. And it's explaining everything I was talking about as far as the scan and the safe space. So everything I'm telling you is is this right there typed up in words and just give you a reminder what you have to do. Uh, there's part, parts of the document that's going to ask you um, city. Uh, so I'll put uh, select New York or Washington, D.C. Uh, destination, Tanzania, mainland for nine days. Arrival, Kilimanjaro and departure. Um, Judith Neri Airport, which is in Dar es Salaam. Uh, it does say single entry for fifty dollars, so that's one part I need to actually remove. Now, it was the case at once, but um, you know, whenever I went to check back, um, you have no option on the actual uh, application online to select single entry. If you are, and if you do, uh, I should say, I see the access to select single entry. You can go ahead and do that, and if it's fifty dollars, that's fine. But other than that, it, it kind of gives you the only option is multiple entry, and then the only other option and the only option to pay is $100. So that's uh, some basic notes that's uh, in there. And I don't want to read all the stuff for everyone. That's when everyone, once you get these uh, emails, uh, when, when we first communicated, to read to it, be clear. And then you can also just go back through it. But it's um, it's based on this, me filling out my application and then looking at all the things and just trying to make it easy for the next person. It's invitation uh, information. Uh, the last person that invited us to that, the hotel uh, be staying at this hotel. I did get an offer from the hotel that was further down the street uh, called Kibo Palace. So still trying to work those uh, things out. But we can still use the details uh, for this hotel uh, to apply for the visa. And um, once I get the new information, um, I'll just basically send an update. But for now, I don't want to hold anyone up from processing a visa. So I just made sure that uh, we had something that was uh, stable and organized what we all used uh, last year. So it gives you the address, the location of the person that invited you, their website, email address, uh, and all those things. So you, when you go into the application, just look at the visa details. And a, any little answer you may have is right there. Um, and then, But then again, if you still need assistance, if something is not clear, um, and because you know, we all look at these things different, you know, it's, it's no big deal. Just send me a quick message um, on WhatsApp and just uh, get a quick response. and go from there. You can also call me or email me and I'll do my best to uh, help you. Uh, so that's uh, for, for the uh, Tanzania visa and then there's uh, many other files on there that I recommend everyone read. There's language translation, there's also uh, preparation uh, which is the main thing we're going to talk about and also I'll be updating everyone in the WhatsApp page about different things as far as the COVID procedure. When you leave from here, you take a COVID test two days before you leave that, to, at a location where you want uh, one day turnaround and that's a PCR test and that's the best thing I recommend for all tours that we take. You know, take it literally two days before the flight go out and if it's a holiday situation you just may have to just do it three days before. But the goal, the goal is to get it back 24 hours later that way when you fly out you have more than enough time in between because they still, the airlines still have the 72 hour requirement from when, you know, when you actually, your results come back to when you actually uh, leave. Uh, so it's um, one of those things that's be trick that can be tricky, but uh, that's how I've, I've always worked it out uh, in the last uh, four journeys that we have taken. And uh, some one or two people have had issues, but for the most part, most of us have been uh, been fine with it. And then another next thing is uh, there's a new procedure once you get to Tanzania. You 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 have always had to fill out the health health for health form or some kind of health situation. Uh, but the new thing is uh, you have to take actually a COVID test there. Uh, so I'm going to get all the details together. I don't, and I like to just make sure I read through all the actual requirements at the location where they are, whatever department, and go through it for clarity and just type up something nice and clear and then communicate with whoever's in that uh, specific group. And it's the same thing as what I'm going to talk about as far as uh, Ghana. Um, that was typed up um, in and, and sent everyone on our WhatsApp group, and also it's something that I can easily just request to, to anyone. I titled it, you know, the kind of the COVID protocol from uh, visa to actually just getting ready to get into the country and what you have to pay and what you have to go through. All right, so that's the Tanzania visa. Um, it is uh, not that bad. Um, I'm going to be redoing mine in another, 
uh, two months or two months or less. And the good thing about it, you don't have to mail out your passport. What I'm also going to do is just try to open it up for somebody who did a Ghana visa recently. They're always changing things in that visa process, so sometimes I can't uh, keep up. And then also I'm going to go into Ghana residency and uh, citizenship, and those are the, that's the only country I'm going to be able to just talk about those things. But anyway, uh, so that is it for Tanzania. And for those who have questions, just um, write down your questions, and I can go into more things as far as just the visa itself. And then the preparation and other things are just things that we just want you just to read through, especially the itinerary and the details right down on the website, africafidafricans.org. And family, the main thing is once you click on the main menu, you see the list of your tour, and you just click on the link and all the details that you're going to need to know that we always go over in this call is there. Let me uh, switch back to the newsletter. Uh, so next our uh, Ghana tour coming up uh, we have is uh, December 24th to January 5th and that's the departure and the actual day we return. So once you click on the link, the same thing too, whenever you want to be clear about the overview, general terms, uh, itinerary, what to pack, what to bring, and things like that. And also there's a, there's a link that we have that um, deals with building your immunity. You just give recommendation as far as things that you want to bring to building immunity and this is information and that's why we just provide this ideas and based on this um, groups of work with and people recommend certain things so uh, that's uh, not bad. And the main thing I want to go into is the visa and also the COVID protocol which I'm going to go to in a few. The same situation it is um, online but you also have to um, you know in your passport if something has changed, anyone that did theirs can always uh, let me know. I, like I was mentioning, I just keep do my best to uh, keep up. But what I want to go to is the uh, the visa email that I've uh, sent out. What you notice uh, on that email is the attachments. Attachments for requirements. Uh, one uh, PDF shows the image of how the visa looks. So remember, when you get the visa back, it's in your passport. It's not going to be something separate. Tanzania is going to email you your visa so you can print it out and put it in your passport, or you can download a PDF copy and scan. But Ghana is literally going to take your passport at their office, um, and they're going to put the stamp in. The Ghana visa email, um, unlike when I had for Tanzania, I kind of typed up the notes. Uh, I literally fill out this full Ghana sample of visa application. Now the flow of the application may be different, but it's still the same information. All right, so let me read through some notes that I have uh, here. Uh, what I usually recommend that you start working on your visa is uh, two to three months before you travel. And in the Ghana case of multiple entry, you can apply for the multiple entry much longer, but the single entry in Ghana is only good for three months. Uh, the multiple entry is good for anywhere from minimum one year to maximum of five years. It just depends on what you get when they're doing visas and things like that. Most people usually get anywhere from three to five years. So what I always recommend in this uh, email is just print everything out or you can just download it and save it in a folder. But this is literally your preparation details. When you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the visa email, it's just going to give you the manager's information that invited us into the country. So it's similar to the Tanzania email where you just put some notes in it. But the main thing is that you have to read the entire email uh, to be clear. And you know, then once again, once you're reading it, if you have any questions or you're not clear about something, just communicate with me. But I'm going through this to let everyone know within the next, uh, based on what tour you're traveling on, two to three months before you leave to start working on a visa. That way you don't have no issues with visas and things like that. And they're not as bad as you think they are. Once you just start, just work it a little bit. If it takes you a few hours or a few days, or just uh, you know, just take your time, get it done. All right, perfect. And a few other things are have changed, so where you can pay for your postage and things like that. So let's follow the directions in the new system. And regardless, um, I got you back on it. That's perfect. And the uh, next journey we're taking. Uh, after that, Senegal and the Gambia reached to our April 1st to 11th, 2022. 
we do the, the schedule uh, once we get closer to all of the tours any little final adjustment we need to make we'll just finalize those things or maybe a change of hotel and things like that we'll do that but uh, what we have is the best schedule based on what we have completed before and we're just uh, going to go from there but what we have completed before and adjusted from has made this the journey and you know, the goals always make it uh, smoother and more organized and having things in place to this where People are more prepared and more updated on things as things are uh, changed. Uh, same thing uh, on this one. I have all those uh, same similar files: uh, itinerary, general overview, uh, general terms, also the preparation information, and I do have the language translation that of the main language that you just I try to put together in every every book and every setup that we have. Just you know, to encourage those of us to learn a few words, and you never know that may get people interested and learning different uh, African language or learning this, you know, certain different uh, terminology. So all of that is this preparation organization uh, that we have set up. And I do have a tour book for every tour that we have done uh, over the years. So the tour book would have those details also in it and some updated information uh, for each tour. And I'll send those out digitally. And if we have a chance to, or if we work, can work it out to get it printed the way we need to get it printed, we'll get those printed um, and so on. But those are the information we have for you. So I'm going to go into the Gambia. We all would have a Gambia email, and uh, it's they're all similar set up just to give you something via email that's put together to make it um, easy for you to process. Now, before I go into that one, the Ghana visa is uh, $100, and that's for multiple entry, and then single entry is uh, $60. And I recommend no one ever rush any visa because as long as you do it in the two to three months, uh, nothing needs to be rushed. But if you're running late within the last month, you definitely want to rush it. Uh, Russian single entry is $100 uh, dollars and uh, multiple entry is $200 for Ghana. And so on to the Gambia email. Uh, so this is another email uh, structure. This one has a sample application and I also have the blank application. And then also have some supporting details uh, based on um, what we have set up, which is the location of the hotel and uh, the management. And uh, this is a five-year uh, visa, and it's good for two years. And it's um, you know, very simple uh, nature set up, um, a non-refundable uh, application fee of $200, and they want it uh, in money order, payable to the embassy of uh, the Gambia. Uh, it talks about staying these services and things like that. Uh, don't need any of those. But you need one passport style photo and you need a prepaid self return envelope uh, with tracking and everything. So once they finish, they can send it back to you. Uh, so not much uh, to it. Uh, you know, the application, your passport, your passport style photo, and the uh, check, uh, sorry, not a check, uh, the money order payable to the Embassy of Ghana. Em sorry, Embassy of uh, the Gambia. Uh, so those are the things that's straightforward and uh, just uh, kind of just honestly just going over it. But tell everyone that just take uh, you know take a few minutes, read over the visa information for your tour, uh, and get it prepared and get it uh, organized and uh, get it done. Uh, for those who are traveling to Ghana and uh, the Gambia next year, uh, you have time. Um, I'll just recommend probably no earlier than six months to apply for a visa, uh, especially if you're applying for multiple entry. So let me just go over a few things on uh, one other subject. Other thing is uh, in Ghana, uh, what we have done is we have now uh, more people are coming to live and do business there and, and looking to acquire land. And once you come to Ghana with us, uh, we're taking a land tour. But also what we have is a, a citizenship uh, conference, uh, which also deals with residency, along with a, a separate business and investment conference. So on that our conference set up, uh, we're working with an organization. Uh, my brother, Dr. Milana, uh, the organization is the Ministry of the Future. So what we have set up and what we have organized is processing membership. Uh, once you're a member of MOF, what they're doing is they're pushing you for citizenship. And then, so I sent everyone uh, the email. Uh, but while you're being put in for citizenship, uh, you still have to go to a standard uh, procedure. I, 
Example, uh, example for those that are literally looking to stay in Ghana more than two months, you're going to have to get a resident uh, permit. Now, what we have set up is you get a resident work permit because the people that are moving there are looking to do business and looking to do some form of uh, work. Uh, so the attorney have organized it uh, together. We just, uh, they just process everything, everything for you. So once I send you the email, just asking everyone to just look at the the citizenship uh, conference uh, video, just uh, process everything, and then just um, you know, communicate back with me if you have any questions. And then once you fill out the applications, uh, we'll get everything. I'll get everything set up for you here, uh, to where I get it to them uh, in Ghana Ministry of the Future and your name and everything will be all set up. Uh, same thing on that one. I have sample applications and things like that. So my conversation right now is literally for the people who are looking to stay in Ghana uh, to become a resident. That way they can stay in the country longer to do business or looking to live and do business. Uh, we help them process the resident permit. And that is a lot simpler because we have game plans, uh, especially if you're not staying longer, uh, and certain things that um, is not really certain things. We just uh, you know we have our techniques, and rather not uh, explain it too much on this uh, conference call uh, because not everyone is looking to you know, work that process. And this is mainly for um, our uh, Black Star Pan African community and the, 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 the certain members from different energy that's looking to this uh make a move there and we want people to understand that we can't have people there on a tourist visa going back and forth trying to renew their tourist visa let's get you in a setup to where you can have residency so you can live in a country and do what you need to do uh, so once again that and let me go back to see what i titled that email the email is titled uh, ghana resident work permit and citizenship support so that's what that one is titled as, and I did my best to make it as clear as possible. But as usual, please just reply back with questions, and I'll look out for your email and then WhatsApp. Those are the two main things I check throughout the day consistently, more than anything else. And then um, you call, you can call and text me, or just uh, call me and let me know. And this, you know, I have my uh, time available for us to go through this. Um, the goal is for us to you know, it's more than tourism or more than this business. The goal is to build an energy where we can you know, kind of be in Africa and do nation building business just to get right to the point uh, where you can build communities, live, do business, connect, uh, work with the people that we have in the country and build the industries of the future that uh, we as a people need and, you know, get us into enterprising and business development and this, all those wonderful things that we see other nations of people get into as all over Africa and then uh, pimping our, our countrymen and women in the country, different countries in Africa. Uh, so uh, we can kind of you know, look at it and kind of complain or have dialogue about it, or we can kind of just you know, get into business and compete. Um, I personally look at it as those are the opportunities that we as a people should have, but at the same time, too, it's what it is. It's an um, unfair world of business enterprise in the world. It's like, you know, I'm originally from Kingston, Jamaica, and then, you know, you go to – on vacation with your family from here to Montego Bay, Negril, Ocheria, so that's anywhere nice in this, the, the Caribbean, and that's anywhere nice in general. And you're like, you know, you wish, you know, you and your family own these things, and, you know, it's a nice thought and everything, and, you know, you may envy the people that do, do it, but my thing is, uh, uh, strength in numbers, black cooperative economics, we put our energy together, educate ourselves on what we need to do, and compete with the rest of the world. And that's my only feel about uh, just anything that's going on in society out of breath with, uh, you know, with many things as far as this over dialogue, as far as this, um, you know, if we're a group of people and we say we're going to do this thing 10, 20 years later, we're still just dialogue and talking about it and making it seem sweet and just feel, having, being very passionate. Anyone who just ever want to even join some energy that we have as far as this connecting our energy together to do anything, just uh, let us know. That's, the, that's why I have the link that say Black Star Pan-African Community. And that's more of a nation building energy. And right now we have the first um, two people literally finished building their house, a husband and wife, and they put, the roof is being put on the property. So when you come to Ghana with us, you know, you'll be able to see that. And it's a work, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. And we have a few other people that's building or in process. So the goal is to legally just make sure everybody has their residency, which those who have started have that. 
the rest are coming, you have it that way, you don't have no issues legally in the country. And the same thing to make sure you get a building permit. And everything is set up to where we're going through a process of showing everyone how to, to get this thing done legally, but also providing them with all the help that they need as far as, uh, and as far as you know, when we start from here, uh, which is just traveling, um, living, doing best, traveling, living, investing, doing business uh, in Africa, and that's just been the energy that we're pushing. So all of this is in reference to it. And the visa process is our first process. Then you work on your residency. Then you know, we put you in for citizenship. All right. So you can request a newsletter, or when you're on the website. It will just say click on this uh, link to view all newsletters to join the mailing list. So what I'll do is I'll create a main menu link. That way if you're just on the, uh, on the phone and you go down the main menu, you can see uh, where it say um, a newsletter and join mailing list. But once you click on it, it'll show you a list of all of the, the newsletters. Uh, so that's uh, the ideal thing I just try to get uh, those who are connecting with us to just look through um, because it's a, it's a standard flow and every once in a while I'll update it. But it does have all, the, all those links, uh, especially like if you're just looking to look at the, join a Facebook group or looking to see what we have on Facebook. Uh, just click on that link and just send a friend request or just add yourself. And you know, throughout the month, I just do my best to just, uh, update information. Uh, new videos being uploaded to the different playlists uh, on YouTube throughout the month. And this is just showing people our experience as far as this conference, traveling, doing things in Africa, business, investment, organizing residency, citizenship, just covering the full spectrum with ourselves and our partners that we're built with. Uh, so that's what I mean by talking about cooperative economics and this, this, even this, in, even this business-wise of this connecting yourself with other business people where we can come together and deliver. Uh, so uh, what you see is just, um, something in a small you know, energy, and the goal is just to keep on building and then compete at a higher level. Uh, but in order to, uh, you have to start somewhere, so this is where we have started, and uh, we've grown over a period of time and be able to connect a lot of people to live, do business, and you know, this enterprise on the African continent. So you just think about you know, how much if we just can merge more of our energy together. So uh, the best example of that so far is that 72-acre uh, land that's going to be seen in Ghana. Um, and we should get to the point where we get closer to start clearing some of the, uh, the 57 acres or doing something more with it. But right now, what we have clear and set up is the first uh, 15 uh, acres, which is a great start. And for those who are just uh, literally just interested in learning more, or just want me to send um, uh, send an email, I say getting started, or if you just want me to send you all the, the legal documents and the documentation we have, I can send it to you email. Or I can also send it to you on uh, WhatsApp. Uh, so that's what we have created. Um, the website information, email information, and also the information on WhatsApp and also Facebook, um, and then the YouTube for the, the videos of us getting to the land, us doing certain things, us having business conference, uh, meeting the chief, seeing the land, seeing people build on the land, seeing the land clear, and, and it's something that I literally just spend throughout my time of the month this, um, over the years just working on these things little by little, and it's um, it's something that I always tell everyone if um, the people don't have track record in doing these kind of business, just you know, make sure you're clear about what you're dealing with as far as that. Because um, what we have is just literally this information that's beyond this documentation. This literally just a life where you you know you're not going to be able to be back and forth in a country if you're doing certain things. Uh, so that's one of the most important thing I kind of share with everyone who may be watching and saying they're trying to do the same thing too. If you, you know, do the right thing. Make sure you do a good business with your brothers and sisters. Let's have better communication, and let's keep on doing things at a high level. And you know, even if it takes us a while, let's keep on working towards uh, us as you know, competing strong as a people. And that's how I look at it. And just looking to work with and connect with any of us that's you know, about the same life, and looking for anyone who just want to just be interested in what we're doing is to come enjoy your time, connect with us in Africa. Uh, it's the best journeys. I've had in my lifetime, and you know that's one of the main reasons I do it. Um, last time we was in Tanzania, it was just the, the trip. You know, it's just something we put together after we couldn't go to South Africa, and by the energy of the ancestors, you know, everything worked out. I mean, I was able to put the book together, and it's just, and I'm, it's also based on experience. But 
I was able to meet two good brothers in Tanzania. One was more of an organizer and one was a tour guide. And I'm telling you, man, sometimes you just, you're out there and this the energy of the ancestors that connect you with the right people so you can work together. And that's what I'm telling people. This is divine. It's just something that, you know, it's our time to do something special in Africa. So I'm, I'm just proud to just, you know, be able to just connect us to Africa for a wonderful experience. And that's what I tell everyone. You need to communicate with me at any time. I'm available. Uh, you know, if you need to meet with me, if you need to do a video call, if you need to go socialize, you need to invite me to a cookout, you need to invite me to a wedding, whatever, you know, uh, just let me know and uh, don't just think that I'm going to be busy, you know. I'm open to connecting with us. I'm open to this, you know, I want to make my, my you know, so I gave up you know, my careers and things like that. You know, just want to make yourself available to connect with us to do certain things and things like that. So, especially where we're in as far as this, African consciousness and this uh, interest in our roots and culture, that's you know, a world I'm open to share with any one of us. So I'm always open to you know, any, any, any kind of invitation, TV, radio, this, anything we can share. I've been traveling the African continent from 2004 up to 2021, 17 straight years, uh, 10 countries, uh, 19 times alone in Ghana. And all 19 times, you know, I was with a group from the smallest, it was eight of us, 2006 uh, to the, and then up to 2021. But um, a few years before that, maybe we had groups in 30s and 40s. But um, that's been a, 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 that you know, experience that has prepared us for doing more in the country. And that's what I'm also saying as far as our partnership with uh, the Ministry of the Future, to where we have access to their attorneys and business people. As I spent time there in Ghana after the tour in May. To connect with some of uh, you know, different people and also connect with different com uh, companies that does things or 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 that are used resourceful to our community members and things like that. You know, we're built more than enough and the strong energy. Now we're saying to others that you know, family, let's join us, uh, energy, let's uh, connect together. So if you're there in Ghana and you see certain things that you want to get involved with, do and things like that, we always have, always have a network of people, especially at the business conference and things like that. And then we have. You know, you have myself and the, a tour guide that will always tell you the right thing and always lead you in the right direction and will always connect you to the good people. That's about the business because we want to see this thing also grow. Um, as I always just talk to a lot of my friends around different parts of the world or different parts of the U.S., and, you know, all you hear about is just everybody else enterprise and building up communities, rents going up, this cost of living going up, that going up and everything, and, you know, us owning less and things like that. So... That's what um, us connecting to Africa give us a chance to do. It gives us a chance to just refresh our energy and just say, hey, you know, let's, you know, we're in a competitive market. It's competitive for now until uh, all the different Arabs and Asian groups uh, just expand and take over. So right now we have a good opportunity just to connect in different countries and invest our energy in this, kind of just learn from each other, grow and build. So that's what I'm uh, also just always excited. This, uh, even if we're just going on a journey to, you know, we just... And, you know, they're all roots and culture journey and, and, you know, and things like that. But uh, even if you're just going and you're just going just to just enjoy tourism, it's an uh, energy that uh, you can change in many ways because some of us have never just seen groups of us just connecting together and just doing wonderful things that is as a people for a cause, bring school supplies, go to different schools and uh, donate what we can and try to just build our social awareness as best as possible and just show people the Africa that we love and that, you know, we feel some people just don't get. All right, so um, let me just go over uh, if, uh, for the Ghana tours uh, coming up. Uh, these are the COVID-19 protocols and process to travel to Ghana and from Ghana. All right, so we already talked about the uh, processing your visa, and that's from the link that uh, you'll see in your email and also on the web link on your tour link uh, details. But uh, take COVID test, uh, COVID-19 uh, PCR test, and that is uh, uh, 48 to 72 uh, hours. Let me just go past this since I mentioned. Now, once you re receive your COVID test back, what you have to do is uh, you have to go to globalhaven.org, and you have to create an account, and you have to upload your, your, your PCR COVID test, and then that is the company that confirms the PCR test, and it confirms it basically saying that uh, it's authentic and it will get you a QR code. So what you want to do with these things is you want to print it and also save it on your 
uh, on your phone or or your uh, email, whether it's a PDF file or whether it's just an email. Uh, so that completes uh, that one process. The next one is uh, you have a link for FrontierHealthcare.com. So that's the link we have to click on, and that's where you pay $150 for your COVID-19 test. Uh, and that test, you, you pay for it about uh, one to three days before you leave for Ghana. And then once you once you get to Ghana, you 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 have to take it out physically at the point of entry. So the same thing too, you print that one out, and also you want to you know, save it to your um, your phone uh, or your email. Right, uh, and the uh, third one is uh, the health declaration form. So once you click on that link, just fill it out, and the same thing about one to three days, um, and then uh, print a copy out and save it also. And then once you're in Ghana, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, we'll take care of it from there as far as your COVID test. Uh, we'll just make sure that um, when you're in Kumasi, uh, uh, before we go out to the craft village, uh, we'll get you there. Let me just back up back to the uh, health declaration form. Uh, so um, as I was saying, you fill out the health declaration form, and then that will go into the system. So once you get to Ghana and you get off the plane, they're going to ask you for your passport number. Once you get in your passport number, it'll confirm to them that you have the that you fill out the health declaration form. So the point of also uh, you uh, saving a copy of it or printing it out is when you get to the airport. That's the trickiest part, and it's the the, the like literally almost miss a flight because I have people that's right there at the Delta counter literally holding me up um, because they don't understand how this new Ghana system is and how to access the stuff online, and you know so. Make sure so you can't even depend on this everything that's being in the system. So the best and sure way I can tell everyone to do it is to make sure that you have a copy of all of these things and literally from there on just make sure you have a copy on your phone so you just you just have it there for you know, for just a backup purpose. So and this is uh, something that I can just easily forward to anyone there on WhatsApp and it's something that uh, we're just gonna keep on talking about. But um, and as new procedures or anything change, um, and the goal is just to just organize it, edit this, and put it in it, and just go for go through that information. That way, everyone is clear. Uh, there has been a lot of people that have missed flights and things like that um, because of some of these processes. I've, people have been stuck in countries, and um, you know. So I'm all about just being prepared, uh, and everything that we learn from one journey to the next, we use it to just get ourselves prepared. So that is uh, that part, and if you just need that, uh, just send me a message on WhatsApp, and I'll forward it to you. Just have a good thing about it, I have all these links in there. Um, and yeah, the last thing um, I was all also saying is uh, once we uh, once we're in Kumasi, we'll literally go to the Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and we'll get our COVID test there. Last I remember, it was about fifty or sixty dollars, and uh, we'll be able to just uh, let you know um, what the cost of the COVID test is and We'll work it out to where we'll get you to, you know, we'll get you the exact uh, amount. We'll get you to pay for your test at uh, the bank and then take you to the location right there on campus. So uh, we did it last year. It wasn't that bad. Uh, and, you know, once I do a certain process, all I do is think about how I can make that process easier. So easier and better game plan that we're going to be using. The last uh, Ghana tour, the videos are right now in Elmina. Um, the next set of videos that show us going to the dungeon. So I've shot a lot of those videos. Um, that's why I'm just usually pace myself to send those out, share other videos. But the last few Ghana tours, you have full playlists of the, these videos. And if there's a specific part or part of the itinerary that you want to look at, the videos are in that you know, that kind of order where you just you see a highlight of almost everything that's on that itinerary. Okay, so uh, that is it. I've um, done my best to try to go over as much as possible, but uh, you know, it, uh, I can only go over so much. So the main thing was the visas, that's just going through all of the visa email and uh, making sure we all clear about COVID tests and preparation like that. And all information will be posted to the WhatsApp group page. So if anyone that's not in any of the groups and need to be connected to WhatsApp, you, WhatsApp, um, you can text me or you know, email me or send me any kind of uh, communication. 
but everyone that's traveling with us on it, on any tour just want them you know want yourself to to have a to download the WhatsApp app and uh, join the group. Also, want to let everyone know, please don't post anything in these groups. Uh, these groups are only for information only. Uh, so, example, uh, if you want to know when the latest conference call is, it will be posted in that group. If you want to know uh, a certain list of COVID protocols or what we have to do, go and do, it's in that list and things like that. And then, naturally, request information separately uh, to me on WhatsApp privately and and whatever your your question is or whatever you, information you need, once you send me a message, uh, my goal is just to answer you as best as possible and quick as possible throughout the day as I move around and do business and things like that. And if you just need to talk to me immediately, you can just call me directly. And, um, and then same thing to our answer or I'll just let you know, give me a minute or I'll let you know when I can call you back if I can't. Because sometimes, you know, we're in conference and interviews and things like that and other, and, you know, and other things, but the goal is to... You know, to keep myself available to communicate with anyone. So at this moment, uh, the line is uh, unmuted, is is on the mute all. Uh, so you can press star six to unmute yourself. Give your name, where you're calling from, what journey you're traveling on, and your question. All right, family, the line is open. Uh, if anyone wants to dialogue or have any questions about anything, I can hear you. Okay. Um, my question was, for, I'm a senior citizen, and at my over 60, they're not recommending um, the yellow fever vaccination. Um, what is the process? Now, I am asking about this for a future trip because um, that is creating too much of a problem for me. But in general, what happens when the... Um, the vaccination is required and the individual has allergies to eggs plus um, old age and um, in general don't want to take it. Will that preclude me from entering Ghana? All right, cool. Thanks for the question, uh, Sandra. I don't have any vaccination requirement. Uh, let me, I'll meet you and answer the question. We don't have any vaccination requirements for any of the tours that we travel on. Uh, if you travel in Ghana and it's, uh, it's forcing you to show a yellow fever before you get your visa, then you may have to do that. Uh, when you get to Ghana, if you ask for a yellow, a yellow fever card and you don't have one, let them know you don't have one, and then they'll work out something for you. They'll let you know an option, but it's confusing at times, I know it. Um, but even last year, no one said anything to any of us about a yellow card. So the issue is that uh, they don't have it documented and, and laid out to it and say that this is mandatory and you have to have this and things like that. So I personally don't want to force anyone, I think is my point, to take any kind of vaccination and shot um, and they don't have to. But uh, if you ask me if you're not going to be able to be left in the country, no, you're, you're with us, no, none of us are going to, we're not going to let anyone get to China in the country for any kind of vaccination requirement and things like that. Uh, so uh, you will be fine. So I just don't want to tell anyone that, hey, go spend this amount of money to do something that you ne may not necessarily have to do. But at the same time, too, I'm telling you that uh, regardless, um, you come there with us, you're fine. Um, I'm there. My staff is there. We have even talked about this situation. Uh, if there's any kind of mis uh, mix up or confusion at the airport, uh, we have a game plan to work it out. Uh, so this has happened before, and, you know, you just communicate and you work it out, and then you're good to go. So now if someone wants to take something outside of yellow fever, it covers yellow fever and other things, and you want to use it for travel purpose and it's more preventive than anything else, uh, I would say uh, do what you have to do, um, and that's why I always say, tell people also to check with your doctor. But if you ask me if there's any quote-unquote vaccination requirement that I can say, like just like I can say in immigration, this is the immigration process. I will say no. Outside your visa, so I'm hoping that uh, that answer it. Now, if the, now, the only thing I'm also saying that if the, the new visa process has something on there like that, that's a different story. But outside of that, we don't have, we, we still can't find anything. All right. So uh, next uh, question, and Sandra had to meet you because uh, the line was um, it was uh, echoing. So if you still have a question.
question and it's not clear, just un unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. Dr. Hi, I just have a statement. This is Dr. Austin um, from North Carolina by way of Atlanta. Um, I already got my visa, and one of the requirements was that, first, I, I paid online, uh, and I had to send my shot record. That, that was included in the packet to prove that I had the yellow fever back vaccination, and I'm over 60 as well. And so I don't know if this is new, but it seems like it might be a requir requirement. But what I do, I recommend that you the embassy, clear that up. But I did have to include that in order to get mine back. Yes, that's uh, definitely uh, new if you see anything that says shot record. So uh, I've just had a few people with uh, visas. Even I've just had a few v people with visas, and they didn't mention that to me. But at the same time, too, it, that could be on there, and then people don't do anything with that, and they just let it go. Yeah, I got mine back maybe a few weeks ago. All right, uh, Sandra, I have to meet your call again. It's uh, echoing. But, uh, but as far as that, uh, so they didn't say that they, they actually send it in and things like that. But uh, anyone see that? That's absolutely new. So uh, the only thing I can't, so, so it's kind of up to the individuals uh, to to either work out their shot stuff because I try not to get in touch, uh, get in too much in anything medical because I don't want to be liable for anything. Um, but uh, as far as our requirements, the operation, organization, and business, we have no requirements for vaccination to travel and do business with us. But if any country or any entity that's in between that situation has a, has a requirement, then you have to do what you have to do. And But at the same time, too, we will make sure that no one gets stranded or gets stuck anywhere for anything. Uh, so I've worked many things out like that before also. But with the new process, um, uh, anyone that's doing it and you get stuck there, yeah, you can call me and I'll do my best to assist you. Uh, Dr. Austin, is there, is there anything else you saw that was um, outside of what I sent you? Um, not really, but because um, I, I was going to, well, I had ordered a money order to pay for mine, but they required that I, that I pay for it online to include the return, um, the return amount so that they can send it back to me. I had to pay all that up front and include the receipt in the packet. All right, cool. So I see a process where they're making it a lot easier. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like they're working to be more online, like I was mentioning with everyone about Tanzania. Uh, they recently just changed their process to what I just explained because I, I came in doing a new process where it's all online before you had to you know, mail it um, as, of, as of, you know, even, even recent. Uh, so everyone, um, uh, the main thing in this, again, family, do your best to fill out any visas that we have, and I promise you I'm here. I've, I've made sure everyone we're dealing with, I've always just given my attention to do the visa. Some some people doing the visa, it could be very stressful. It can just throw you off because it's not like you're what, what some people have done before. Even the same thing when I'm talking about um, getting people residency and eventually helping people work on the aspect of their citizenship with the attorneys. That also can be very stressful. So all we're doing is this creating process to make something easier, and then people know, hey, we got your back. Uh, so that's, um, you know, these are all benefits and all things of this people just networking with us and also just being a part of uh, a group where everything is done for you and you have people you can communicate with. Now the example that you provided was um, was was that that's what I used to do my. Yes, and that was the that was the, the the copy of it from the the, the old system that they had, which was right. so. They, but um, but yeah, since I've been doing the Ghana visa, I've done three of them already, and um, they've they've upgraded the process over the years, which is which is a good thing because you don't ever want to just you know you want to always just look for innovations and having you pay the money order, because the reason why I was saying about the money order is I've had someone send a check-in and they denied their visa and that person wasn't able to get on their trip so they had another trip going to London and then we had to work something off for them for them to process the visa in London. So that's what they're doing. They're seeing mistakes that have been made and trying to perfect the system. So that's not bad. 
you pay for your you pay for your return envelope package, and then you pay for um, you pay for your money order. And then what I sent you was the invitation letter and things like that. Those are just new things that they just started asking for. So everything, like I mentioned, fam, honest, everything is just on this uh, system here at my office, and we just modify, change things, get you what you need, and get your visa going. Don't want nobody to have visa issues to where that stop you from coming to Africa because it's not a you know, it's a process we can all get done. So again, Sam, we're talking about uh, visas and we we'll know if anybody have questions from any other country about visas, preparation information, COVID-19, uh, and then you know the basics, uh, itinerary, overview, any of those things also if you have any questions. But the main thing I wanted to do is focus on these things that are those those requirements uh, that needs to get us in the country. Brother Bomani, I wanted to find out if um, are we leaving for Tanzania on out of um, Hartsfield, those whoever's in Georgia or in the southeast? Uh, yes, we're flying directly from Atlanta to Amsterdam, and everyone, wherever location you are, you're going to leave directly where you are, and you, everyone is going to Amsterdam. Okay. And then we're going to go directly to Kilimanjaro Airport. Yes. And then we're going, to, and then on the way back, we're using Dar es Salaam. Money Connors, I'm um, in North Carolina. I looked on the visa website for Ghana, and they said that um, if you cannot get the shot for yellow fever. An African who, uh, for medical reasons, cannot obtain the vaccination certificate must submit a medical certificate from a doctor to then process your visa application. You can get an exempt, uh, even, yes. if, even, if you're, and even if you're younger than that and you have some kind of conditions. A lot of things is really have to get you know, a good doctor to explain, explain the situation and they can work those things out. So perfect, um, Dr. Austin, perfect, that'll work. So family, there you go, you have options. What is the best time to to contact you? Because I have some other um, questions that pertain to um, the length of my trip. Yeah, the best thing to do, like I was saying to everyone, is um, have everybody on WhatsApp, that way I can see your communication and we can kind of see the flow of what, we, what we've been talking about for the record, uh, they'll send me a message on WhatsApp, and it's as simple as, you know, if, uh, you know, when you send me the message and I communicate back with you, I can just give you a better situation. But I uh, work throughout the day, does, which doesn't mean I'm available throughout the day, but I just, I'm just working throughout the day, and that's uh, really it. So uh, throughout the day, I can communicate with you. I don't have any set hours of anything. Can you uh, introduce yourself, name, where you're calling from, your question, and um, what should be going on? Oh, thank you. Um, I, I'm trying. I'm interested in the Tanzania trip, and I just had a. Uh, uh, my name is Nicole. Uh, I have a question on does. Uh, I couldn't find anything that says Tanzania uh, requires any travel insurance or in medical insurance during this COVID time, because I know some countries do. Is do you know if they have that requirement? Uh, no, uh, but that's one thing that we like can... A... No, not that, not of my knowledge. Um, not of my knowledge. I'll definitely you know, talk with our tour guide. And I, my goal is to also tell them uh, to make sure between me and him we find out uh, all the things that we need to find out, um, especially in the next two, three months before we travel. But no, these are not things that we're, anyone told us about. Okay. I, do have, I do have people that go in and out of the country, so that's also the thing that I ask them, you know, did you have to do anything new and so on? That way I can share it with uh, our group. But no one has told me anything. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks. Uh, so in the, the WhatsApp app or the WhatsApp, you, I know I was on that and I communicated with you, but I didn't see a group. So you would have to add those interested in being part of the group for future travel. You would have to add me to that group. Is that something I would request? Yeah, everyone that's, um, say, example, everyone that uh, has paid a deposit or committed to the, whatever trip, I put them on there. But at the same time, too, if they're not on there, or if there's someone that has an interest and we're talking and I need to add you on, the, you know, add you on there, um, that's fine. But in WhatsApp, the best thing to do is to send me a message. Um, and I'm using that as a more effective way than this, 
uh, uh, emails are more for if you're trying to send certain things to me. But the send me message, I can always send you the link and things like that. And if anybody would need to communicate with me, you could just always say, you know, just, uh, you know, send me a message on WhatsApp, like, hey, reminder. And because your message will come right to the top of WhatsApp, and I'll just see it. And I'm like, okay, let me just go work on this for you and get that done. So I'm saying that as a way you know, to keep up with everyone we do business with and to make the people that we're doing business with a priority communication and things like that, to respect everyone who's paying their money and everyone who's showing their commitment to doing things in Africa. So, I just, I just, you know, so, uh, so in general, family, I look out for everyone's uh, message. You need to message me and say, or even if you just need to say, um, I have a few things I want to go over with you via, you know, via phone call and things like that, and we just confirm a time or confirm whatever, and we just go from there. Thank you for your information. I appreciate it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you the information, like I mentioned, family, a lot of stuff we have is uh, repetitive and everything is kind of typed up and sent out there, but the main thing I want to do is just make myself available to answer any question and just go over a general view of certain information and updates. Uh, so if no one, no one else uh, have any questions, um, what I'll do is um, I'll work on this um, recording, edit it, uh, give, give me a few days, and I'll just um, get it out there as this our documented uh, communication. So until then, I'll be on standby. If anybody have any questions, want to dialogue or do anything, um, I keep myself available. So you take care, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you. You too. Bye. All right. Unmute. Thank you. All right. We're in the mute open uh, mode, so everybody can hear themselves as we uh, close out. You take care, family. God bless. God bless. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, perfect. Are you welcome?